you don't have a helmet on. Helmet the Jeep doesn't have a rifle right now. Go How ahead. is he ready? It's like having 26 kids that I have to watch after. It really is. Oh. Ready would be oh. on the road, oh. staged, oh. ready to move at 8.30. I think if they introduced drug testing to the Afghan army, uh, we would lose probably three quarters to maybe 80, 85 percent of the army. It requires telling them almost 30 times, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Come on, let's go! Building up Afghanistan's army is one of the mainstays of the U.S. exit strategy from this war. It now stands at around 80,000 soldiers. But President Obama recently announced he wants to triple that number. These U.S. Marines are embedded tactical trainers, also known as ETTs, and their job is to mentor the fledgling Afghan army. Check your soldiers, make sure they're good. Someone's, someone's got a helmet on backwards. They all still got their weapons slung on their shoulders, like it's not a, a fucking combat patrol. I know we're supposed to advise them and everything like that, but they're supposed to be able to conduct tactical operations without us. So if I wasn't standing here right now, it makes me wonder if a dude in a bright, bright blue shirt would be going into the mountains, and he probably would be. You get over here and you walk into a whole squad of ANA smoking hashish. They don't understand that the use of drugs, it affects the way that they, they accomplish their mission. It ultimately, it affects their ability to protect their nation and get Afghanistan on its feet. Who's smoking hashish around here? Who's smoking hash? We're going to find them. Soldiers come out without helmets. Soldiers come out missing a lot of gear. There's inspections that need to be done before we step off on a patrol. Right now, we're not going to go on the patrol. Tell him to come over here. Come here. Salam alaikum. What kind of cigarette is that? Cheers. What? Why is he throw? Why are you throwing away your cigarette? Aren't cigarettes worth a lot of money here? Ne, hashish ne. Hashish. Hashish. No hashish. Yes, hashish. You smell this, and you tell me that's not hashish. It's not just a complete lack of discipline. Lack of strong leadership is also a big problem. This army is really upsetting me now. In fact, you can't really call it an army at all. I'm just losing interest in it. But what can we do? They've recruited totally the wrong kind of men. They're all stupid and ignorant. These young men are a bunch of delinquents. They're only here because they've been driven out of their villages for misbehaving. You have to figure out what motivates your soldiers. And you need to get that sense of nationalism that, you know, that Afghanistan can be a good country, that, you know, will will play on a global scale with all the other countries that can stand up to Pakistan, that can stand up to Iran, you know, and be, you know, the Afghanistan of history. I've talked to them like this many times. I've gone over it again and again. But they just come for a short while, and if they don't like it here, they just desert. I don't get along with them, and they don't get along with me. Promotion in the Afghan army often has more to do with family connections and money than ability or merit. This provides little incentive to the average soldier. You know, when you look at the enemy, the enemy, they have performance-based promotions where, you know, they, if they do a good job, they get promoted vice <coughs> who they're related to. And you kind of have to respect that in a way. He doesn't have any of his gear on. You're not ready. You don't have a helmet on. Helmet the Jeep doesn't have a rifle right now. Tame, How is he ready? Tame, helmet nadar, <laughs> nadar, ready would be oh. on the road, <laughs> staged, he's ready to move, move at 8.30. Okay, he's not okay. doing it. Come on, let's go. <laughs> After seven years of training, many Afghan troops still lack even the most basic of soldiering skills. There you go. Good. There. I give a fuck about your chai. I care about the mission. 
And they are facing a well-trained, highly motivated and experienced enemy that is steadily gaining ground. We are a little better than we were, and I hope in the future we'll improve some more. But in the meantime, the international forces have to stay. They have to stay here to help us. If things go on as they are in Afghanistan, then it's just going to get worse and worse. It will never get any better. President Obama has allocated 4,000 more military trainers to the Afghan mission. Whether that will be enough to stem the tide of the Taliban advance remains to be seen. Walk down here to ANA weren't dressed, weren't ready, didn't have their gear on. Just now getting their gear finished up. No inspections happened again, I can almost guarantee it. But uh, still, time means nothing to these guys. If I tell them that they were, the douche mom was going to drop a bomb on their head at 8.30 in the morning, they'd probably be drinking chai at 8.29.